In the 2015 holiday horror film Krampus, a young boy who isn't exactly feeling the Christmas spirit accidentally exacerbates his family's discord when he summons an ancient demon who arrives with an army of festive frights in tow. From sentient snowmen to killer gingerbread cookies and beyond, the family is forced to try and survive a gauntlet of ghoulish creatures intent on bringing their winter celebration to a cold end. But as you may know, the devilish entity at the center of the story's origins goes back many centuries before the advent of the motion picture and has a legacy that rivals Santa himself. What's more, this creature's history of Christmas evil is so considerable and varied, you'd do your best to stay off the naughty list if you want to survive. Oh, you've been naughty. Greetings and welcome to the History of Fright. I'm your host, Michael Verratti. As we come to the end of our season, we thought it was only appropriate to wrap things up with the most seasonal fright of them all. The Krampus. Widely known as the antithesis of St. Nicholas, the Krampus' annual punishment of naughty children during the holidays has been depicted in both ancient and modern storytelling, as well as a plethora of films and TV, making him something of a Christmas superstar in his own right. However, what many don't know is that this merry monster's history is riddled with vicious variations and inclinations that made some in positions of power nervous about his influence. And I'm not talking about the man at the North Pole. The actual beginnings of the Krampus myth reach so far back, folklorists and historians can't quite agree exactly where and how the story began. The most widely assumed theory is that the Krampus, usually depicted as a half-goat, half-demon wrapped in chains, is rooted in pre-Christian Alpine traditions. For those not familiar, the Alpine traditions are based in folklore, myths, and customs of the Alps, usually amalgamated from ancient German, Austrian, Swiss, Bavarian, Slovenian, and Gallo-Roman beliefs, many of which have tendrils in old forms of paganism. Indeed, the word Krampus itself is derived from an old High German word for claw, which in turn makes reference to the creature's demonic presentation. In fact, certain scholars believe that the Krampus's horned visage and goat-like physicality infer that he is in actuality another alias for the devil himself, and not, in fact, a separate being. In investigating the myth, author Maurice Bruce wrote that there seems to be little doubt as to the Krampus's true identity, as his appearance resembled the horned god of witches, and that his chains may signify a Christian attempt to bind the devil. And in some ways, there's merit to this argument. Since the modern idea of the Krampus likely emerged as an amalgamation of the ideas of several cultures, when traced back to certain regions, the creature has more definitive devilish roots than others. For example, in rural Croatian culture, the Krampus was literally presented as a devil who traveled alongside St. Nicholas during Christmas to the homes of children. If a child had been good that year, St. Nicholas would give the child a reward, but if they had been bad, the devil would put the child in an old sack and drag them away from their family to either be beaten, drowned, or taken back to hell. Maybe all three. Honestly, a far worse punishment than a lump of coal. Whether Satan or just the anti-Santa, there are some who took umbrage with Krampus's darker overtones. Austria placed a ban on the inclusion of Krampus in holiday celebrations in 1923, and as late as the 1950s pushed print propaganda decrying Krampus iconography as evil and unwelcome. However, by the turn of the century, many of the Eastern European nations that had at one time sought to eliminate Krampus from the discussion saw a return of celebrations in his honor, with an appreciation of old traditions being revived. Now, some may argue that the reemergence of Krampus was due in part to the people of these countries wanting to reconnect with their roots. And that may be true, but I also think there's just something fun about being naughty in a season that is so traditionally considered nice. These days, Krampus celebrations happen the world over, often on the night of December 5th, to coincide with St. Nicholas Day on the 6th. Just like in the folklore of old, these guys don't just travel together, they party together too. And like Christmas itself, the celebration of Krampus has many long-standing traditions. Krampus greeting cards, usually comically depicting the monster and buxom babes, have been exchanged as far back as the 1800s. And just as you would leave cookies for Santa, it's customary in some parts of Europe to leave a glass of booze, schnapps specifically, for Krampus. Krampus has a long history of making appearances across the landscape of pop culture including the cinema. With his horned head and monstrous stature, Krampus is a no-brainer when it comes to casting a villain for your holiday horror flick. Beyond the already mentioned 2015 film directed by Mike Doherty and starring Tony Collette, at the movies, his storied history includes an epic battle with Santa in 2015's A Christmas Horror Story, a witchy incarnation in 2017's Mother Krampus, and a flashback to his time during World War I and the recent Krampus origins. On TV, he's had run-ins with the Scooby-Doo gang, the Venture Brothers, the cast of Grimm, and much more. Wait a minute, wait a, who the hell is applauding? Powerful, strong, and willing to punish us if we've been naughty, Krampus is everything Santa isn't, and for hundreds of years, we've loved him for that fact. So this year, when you're at that holiday dinner where that one uncle won't stop droning on about how you need to get your life together, maybe leave out a glass of schnapps and hope for the best. Happy holidays, and until next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and supporting History of Fright. For more of my spooky content, don't forget to follow me, Michael Verratti, and for more cool videos, follow Gamma Ray across the web.